Dairy producer Saputo, like many others, had to pivot in the face of this COVID-19 pandemic as its big demand from food service shifted, but retail demand picked up. Lino Saputo is CEO of Saputo. Thank you for being with us, Lino. Appreciate it. Uh, and I do want to start with just a snapshot of the quarter and a sense from you of, uh, of what you expect. In other words, there was obviously there was a shutdown in some parts of your business um, that was intense. Is the worst over for you? Well, we think the worst is over. It all depends on how uh, the next wave of uh, economic shutdown is going to look like. Uh, early on uh, in March, April, we weren't quite sure what to expect. Uh, uh, retail volume was up about 20 percent. Food service was down about 40 percent. Uh, but we had a great opportunity to reinvent ourselves. We had a great opportunity to be able to think outside the box. My team has really performed extremely well. Uh, this quarter, we're, we're down in revenues, but we're up in profitability. So uh, I'm super delighted mm -hmm. about uh, the way our team has been responding to this crisis. Yeah, I mean, it, that did jump out at me, I must say, revenue down almost 8%, but EBITDA up almost 3%. So what's going on internally that, that's allowing that to happen? Is it one-time cost cuts or is it sort of permanent changes? What's happening? Yeah, so no, not, no one-time cost cuts. I mean, we are controlling our spending. Uh, we're deferring the things that we can defer. Uh, things like promotional, uh, trade spend, travel is way, way, way down, of course. Um, and then other expenses are up. Uh, but, you know, we've had the ability to be able to repurpose some of our inventory, repurpose some of our plants. Uh, we had great discussions with our customers, either on the retail side or on the food service side, to see how we can take some cost out of the system reducing some of the SKUs. And ultimately, uh, I, I will tell you that we, uh, we've had a great opportunity to be able to respond effectively to, uh, uh, to uh, consumers' requests. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, our results are showing that. And when you talk about that, to respond to consumers' requests, I mean, we, we obviously there will be huge chunks of your stable businesses that are shut down, but maybe not forever. How do you pivot in a way that makes sense to you, where you can pivot back? In other words, you know, you've only got so much production to go around. How do you make sure that the COVID effect can be undone if and when the time comes? Yeah, so uh, the food service uh, manufacturing sites that we have are not going to change dramatically in terms of uh, their makeup and their infrastructure. Uh, I believe that food service and industrial business will come back over time as uh, consumers get used to traveling again and consumers get used to get, uh, going out again. And perhaps that might only come once there's a vaccine. Uh, but those patterns will come back. So we're not going to be repurposing our plants. Uh, we have made a commitment to uh, uh, make sure that our employees receive 100% of their wages irrespective of if they're working their full uh, weeks or not. That is a cost that we are incurring. Uh, and we're trying to make do with the other facilities that we have that are running well beyond their capacity utilization, uh, close to 110, 115 percent of their capacity utilization. Uh, so you've got to get creative. Uh, you've got to reinvent yourself. You've got to find ways to make things happen. But, uh, you know, typically what we found is if you have a very engaged workforce, uh, they'll find solutions. You do, uh, you are beginning to see restaurants reopen tentatively across many of your jurisdictions. How quickly do you see volume coming back as we get back to whatever this interim new normal is? So in uh, March and April, we saw food service uh, volume drop 40, 50, even 60%. Uh, right now, we're mm -hmm. back up to, uh, say, total 80% of our historical levels. So we saw, depending on the jurisdictions that we're in, whether it's Canada, United States, or uh, the other platforms we have. Uh, so the food service business has come back, back up to close to 80% of where it historically was. Moving forward, of course, there's going to be a lot of vol volatility. Uh, there's going to be uh, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, but I feel very, very comfortable uh, with our management's mindset, uh, with our team's uh, approach to this. I think if there is going to be a second wave, uh, we're going to be much better prepared for it and we'll pivot really well. You are also a global player. Um, I imagine that the response has been very different in every jurisdiction that you're operating in. Um, how, has that been very complex to manage, that the situation is so different? Uh, it has been, uh, but we do have a crisis management team that's in place that includes all of the leaders from all of our countries, and we're learning from each other. Uh, some countries are going through a rougher time than others, some early on, some later on. 
uh, but we're learning from each other's uh, uh, best practices, and uh, uh, it's become a lot easier to manage today than it was uh, uh, way back when this uh, uh, pandemic started. You had said last time you talked to us in March that acquisitions might be on your mind. Is that still the case? Are you seeing opportunities out there despite everything that's going on? Absolutely. Absolutely. Our cash flows are fantastic. Uh, we're paying down debt aggressively. Uh, we've got uh, financial flexibility upwards of uh, $2 billion, if not more. Uh, so, yes, uh, uh, the, this crisis has hit the dairy industry. Some of our players going into this crisis were in bad shape and now they're even worse shape. Uh, so, yes, there's going to be some great opportunities for us to make some acquisitions. I will tell you there are uh, easily five or six or seven legitimate files that we're looking at right now. Uh, uh, the, this COVID-19 has not slowed down our desire to make a deal, has not slowed down our ability to perform due diligence. So I'm, uh, I'm optimistic that, uh, yes, there will be some deals for us uh, to do. Of course, we will always be disciplined in our approach. We'll have to make sure that the conditions are right and that the price is right, but we are hungry for deals. The pressures of trade agreements have definitely been um, alive and well for you in recent years. Uh, we've obviously settled with, as we settle into the new NAFTA, uh, there will continue, though, to be pressure, especially on our marketing boards here in Canada. Are, are you concerned about changes there? Are you concerned about some of the agreements we made with the new NAFTA? Well, I'm delighted with the uh, decisions that our government has taken, especially in the last two agreements. 85% of the import license allocations have gone to dairy stakeholders. So that would be either dairy producers or dairy processors. Uh, so we can control our own destiny. In fact, what we've done over the course of the last quarter, we've imported our high value cheddar products, Cathedral City, into Canada. So we're bringing high value products, maintaining the value in dairy uh, through the import licenses that we have been granted. Uh, so I'm uh, also optimistic about how those free trade agreements ended for us in the dairy space. And I applaud the governments for uh, uh, really allowing the dairy stakeholders uh, to have control over their own destiny. So that really worked out well. Has any of that been interrupted by supply chain issues across, uh, across Europe, for instance? Yes, of course. When you can't find uh, transport to get product into the country, uh, when the ports are closed at different areas, uh, there is going to be some trade disruption, uh, but the, now the ports have opened up. Uh, we have uh, uh, brought product into our country in Canada and through other platforms. We have also started to export into uh, the emerging markets. Uh, so things are getting back to uh, some normalcy, not exactly to where we were before, uh, but getting close to where we were before from an export-import uh, perspective.